Welcome back to the Core EM Podcast, the core content for anyone, anywhere, and just in time. This is the official podcast of the NYU Bellevue EM Residency Program. This week, we are back to basics, and we're going to discuss testicular torsion. Torsion is defined as twisting of the spermatic cord, leading to decreased blood flow to the testicle, resulting in ischemia, infarction, and potentially tissue necrosis. It's the most common cause of acute scrotal pain in boys prior to puberty, and there's a number of risk factors to consider, including a history of cryptorchidism, horizontal testicular lie at baseline, and increased spermatic cord length. Pathophysiologically, what we see is an anatomical defect in the tunica vaginalis, allowing the testicle to rotate when the cremasteric muscle contracts. Twisting of the testicle initially causes compromised venous return, but it can lead to arterial obstruction, leading to ischemia and necrosis. The testicle can rotate anywhere from 180 to 720 degrees. You can have multiple rotations around that spermatic cord. A longer duration of torsion increases the risk of tissue necrosis, and in the past, we used to say that if the symptoms have been going on for more than six hours, there's not going to be a good chance of salvaging that testicle, but we know now that symptoms even up to 24 to 48 hours can still have a salvage rate that's in the 25% range. When we see a patient with a painful scrotum, there's a number of diagnoses to consider, but epididymitis is probably the most common alternate diagnosis, and it's a much more common pathology. Now, that being said, we obviously don't want to miss the torsion. That's the one that is more dangerous to miss. There are a number of historical and physical exam features that we want to be looking for, but we have to remember that history and physical won't always give us the diagnosis. Sidler published a paper in 1997 where he stated, no discriminating features in either history or examination conclusively differentiate the correct diagnosis. When looking at the history, we are typically looking for a sudden onset of scrotal pain. The patient will often experience nausea and vomiting, and occasionally there will be a history of blunt trauma in about 10% of patients. Some patients will tell you that they've had similar pain in the past, and that should not be reassuring as it is probably a torsion-detorsion event. The presentation is often delayed over nine and a half to 10 hours, but that doesn't mean that this tissue isn't salvageable. So we should still be striving to make that diagnosis as quickly as possible. Again, the dogmatic teaching was that if the patient had symptoms for more than six hours, you weren't going to find a salvageable testicle, but that's simply not true. It's also important to note that up to 20% of patients will present with abdominal or flank pain alone. They won't have any testicular pain. So any male with lower abdominal pain should have a testicular examination, and that includes both a visual inspection as well as palpation. Moving from history to physical examination, once again, there is no single examination finding that rules in or rules out the diagnosis. Typically, we'll find a unilateral, tender, firm testicle. You may see scrotal erythema, edema, or swelling, but these are often symptoms that come after a number of hours of symptoms. So the patient may come in and they may have no physical exam findings on inspection, which again stresses the need for palpation as well. The affected testicle may have a higher lie than the unaffected one, and that in fact has an odds ratio of 60. So that's a very powerful finding in making the diagnosis. The absence of a cremasteric reflex, which is when you sweep the inner thigh and that causes the scrotum to retract upwards, was previously thought to have a 100% sensitivity and specificity, but it's simply not true. Up to 30% of males with normal testicles will have an absent cremasteric reflex, and some studies report a sensitivity as low as 60%. You may also see a horizontal instead of a vertical testicular lie. Here's the important part of the physical exam. If you see any of these abnormal findings, it pushes you towards the diagnosis. These are specific. However, the absence of these findings does not rule out the diagnosis. They're not sensitive enough to make that call. So if you don't have any of the findings, you haven't ruled out the disease. So if we can't simply make this diagnosis based on history and physical, how do we actually do it? The first thing to keep in our minds is that the diagnosis of testicular torsion should be pursued in any patient with acute scrotal pain, regardless of the exam, the history, and even the imaging, because all of these things have significant limitations. In patients with a high suspicion of torsion, emergent surgical consultation should not be delayed by diagnostic imaging as time still is testicle. A scrotal ultrasound can be obtained in patients where the diagnosis is not so simple to make. So if the patient has acute scrotal pain, but they don't have any physical exam findings, then ultrasound seems like a good next step. 
The diagnostic characteristics for this test, though, are not perfect. The sensitivity is anywhere as low as 88%, which I don't think would reassure any of us to rule the disease out. Specificity is around 90%, so again, you're not going to always get the diagnosis ruled in or ruled out based on this. There are a number of different findings on the testicular ultrasound, and we're going to refer you over to MRAP HD, where there's a great video going through all of these different things. One of the big points, though, is that up to 25% of ultrasounds will show continued flow to the testicle even when there's significant ischemia or even infarction going on. So we can't always rely on that. If you've got a good story for testicular torsion and a negative ultrasound, push for your urologist to consult. If you have a bad story or you don't have a very good examination for torsion and the ultrasound is negative, that might be enough to say that we have eliminated the disease from our minds. While we can see how this is a difficult diagnosis to make, we are going to be able to make it with a combination of physical, history, and our ultrasound. Once we've made the diagnosis, all patients with suspicion of testicular torsion or confirmed torsion should have immediate consultation with a urologist for potential operative exploration and repair. That's really key. It doesn't matter how long those symptoms have been going on for. You have to get the urologist to consult. We've said it a couple of times already, but it bears repeating that there is no magical window within which the testicle is salvageable and outside of which we can't save that testicle. All of these patients should get that consultation by the expert. While waiting for that consultant to arrive or while waiting for the OR to be ready for the patient, there are some other things that we should do. We should provide analgesia as well as antiemetics. We also should consider the manual detorsion. What we are typically told is that we can externally rotate the testicles or open the book, and that's going to detorse the spermatic cord and return circulation to the testicle. Now, that may be successful in somewhere around 25 up to 80% of cases, so definitely something worth trying. But we also have to remember that not all testicles will be rotated in the same direction. Sometimes they can torse in the opposite direction that we assume they're going to go in. What we do for this procedure is to place the patient supine, we stand at the patient's feet, and we can start by applying the open book rotation. So for the patient's left testicle, we're going to rotate to their left. For their right testicle, we're going to rotate to the right. What we want to see is a relief of symptoms with our procedure. The patient should get better as we detorse them. If they're not getting better, we have to consider two things. Is the patient's testicle rotated more than one time around, and that's why we haven't relieved the symptoms, or has the testicle actually rotated in the opposite direction? Even if the patient's symptoms improve, we should confirm that there's been a return of circulation with ultrasound, and we should expect that the patient will still probably go to the operating room for a procedure to be done. Let's hit some take-home points before we finish up. We have to consider the diagnosis of testicular torsion in all patients with acute testicular pain. Testicular torsion is a surgical emergency that requires immediate urologic consultation to increase the rate of tissue salvage. But remember that there is no magic window. Even 6, 8, 24, 48 hours outside of torsion onset, the patient's testicle may still be salvageable. History, physical exam, and ultrasound are all flawed in making the diagnosis, so don't rely on one piece alone. The gold standard here is surgical exploration. And finally, consider manual detorsion in patients where consultation will be delayed or a trip to the operating room is going to be delayed. That's all for the Core EM podcast this week. Come on over and check out the site at coreem.net. We've got a ton of great core content emergency medicine. We'll have a core post up on Wednesday and a journal update up on Thursday. Don't forget to check out our Facebook page and follow us on Google Plus and on Twitter where our handle is at core underscore EM. Thanks and see you all next week.